Well, hey, good day, everyone. How's it going? I uh, wanted to do a quick video to accompany uh, the post I put here on how to create uh, overlays within ForeFlight Mobile. So if you have that application and you're using it within Flight Simulator 2020 and you're interested, or any other Flight Simulator product for that matter, if you're interested in adding your own custom overlays, I'm going to do a quick tutorial video to accompany that post to show you how to do that. A couple things you're going to need. Number one is a source of a map, uh, and I'll share that information in the post as well. Um, lots of places you can get, you know, JPEG maps, PDF maps, whatever it happens to be. The whole process is that you're going to take that map that you have, you're going to overlay it and georeference it, and then use that to create a map tile. An MB tile is the term that will then get uploaded into ForeFlight. You also need a tool to create that process. And what um, I found uh, just playing around on my own and looking up is MapTiler, free version available. I'll put the links in the comments. Um, MapTiler is a desktop application that you can then use and drag your video, your uh, image files and then have it go through the process. So we're going to walk through that now. So I've already pulled down a map um, and this is something that was available on one of the sites that I'll share, which is for those folks doing the bush flights and flying out in Papua New Guinea or uh, that area, there are maps available for that. And I've got the uh, Port Moresby area for Papua New Guinea available that I downloaded previously in a file. So I'm just going to take that and drag it right on over. Um, and I did this for the first time, guys, just yesterday. So it was a on the fly. I looked at a short little video from MapTeller. They've got some tutorials out there that you can use to get you started. Now, again, I'll link to those, but pretty straightforward process. Drop it in, and then you're going to go ahead and click Assign Location Visually, which is then going to hopefully load up your map. And it'll put your uh, map on the right-hand side, the chart that you have. On the left-hand side, you'll have a uh, map that you then will use to get to the area where you're uh, representing by the image that you have. You can do that by searching. If you know the town name, you can type it in. But basically, we're just going to go into uh, Papua New Guinea area, which is what we know we have, and we can kind of approximately get close to where we're at. The next step you're going to have to do is very important, and this is where you want to be as precise as you can be so that the overlay matches up the existing map. So again, the idea is you're going to take this and match it. So what you've got to do is find a reference point on this map that corresponds to this map. Now it is a little bit involved, so I'm gonna kinda of do a quick and dirty here to give you a feel for it. Um, but basically, what you're gonna to wanna to do is find points on the map that represent what you have here on this image, and then you will click to add them. Um, there's certainly lots of methods I'm sure you can use. You get quick and proficient at this pretty fast. But um, the first thing you wanna do is just kind of get a general idea of the vicinity you're in. I see this little area that's bumped out here. This is probably right about here, a little bit further up the path to go there. Um, and I can see that there is a dividing line here between, uh, it looks like some different um, states or areas. And that looks like about where we're gonna be. As I zoom in on each of these maps individually, now this is an older map. Keep in mind some of the sources, depending on what you get, these, these maps here for Papua New Guinea that I found in the source are very old but it'll give you a great idea of, um, of, of you know, kind of where you're at. So you can see, uh, let's see, that's Moro, that's Mo. We're just kind of trying to find <clears throat> the location of where we're at here. And, and then you'll link those two together. So we're gonna just keep on going up and see if we can find the same name. There's Lee, Lee's Airport, which is right here. So we're getting closer. Um, continue on up here. We're gonna look for, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, town of uh, Kukipi, which is right here. There's Kukipi. And we've got an interesting feature here. You want to try to find something that's got a decent enough feature that you can reference uh, on both. And I find that the map sources here you can change. So if you come over to this left window and you click the globe icon, you can change to different things. Now, I'll switch back and forth between, let's say, terrain view, which sometimes will give you a little bit different definition. Um, or I might also come back here and use a satellite view, which may not give you a ton, but it, it can be a little bit better in, in defining, you know, certain areas um, where there might be some better coverage. Now, note again, with the age of the maps, there might be some differences in what you see. But the general idea is to get very close to, to what you've got here. So, um, in this representation, it's a little bit harder for me to see. So I'm going to go back to the terrain view. And this is a little bit more representative of what I think is right in this area here, I believe, um, or down in here. So the idea is to kind of get yourself close 
and uh, just dragging a little bit longer because I'm just not quite so sure. I think I'm going to use this Kukipi, which is down here, as my reference point. Okay, so there's the entrance to, let's do the southern entrance to Kukipi on this little river that's here. So you're going to come over to this map, and you're going to click a point. Then you're going to come over, nah, I'm going to move it. And if it's not quite what you want, you can adjust it or delete it and start over. Then you're going to come over to this chart and you're going to click the exact same thing. You've georeferenced one point and it will show a one like that when it's completed. Now you want to do at least three of these points. And, uh, you know, I tend to try to show the, the area, if you will, just to kind of get the, the uh, you know, bounding box that it's going to end up creating. So you can come up here to the north side. <clears throat> and we'll see here, we're going to look for, let's say, Kobo. And that's going to be roughly diagonal up here. So we're going to come up to the north side, and hopefully we get lucky. And uh, there's Kobio. I don't know if that's the same area. We'll see. Again, some of these maps are old, so you got to make sure that you're looking in the right area. There's Kobia. Continue down the coastline. We're just looking for some interesting features there's alligator point okay i know where that is because i remember doing a, a chart of a map in this area here which is going to be right around in here yep there's that little lake here so if we continue around there might be another lake and a little island up here it looks like bow island there is bow and there is bow and there's a little lake here that's hard to see, but there's an outline of it here. So this is where, again, I might go back to the satellite view and see if that lake is defined. And yes, it is. See how much better that pops out? So there's the lake. There's the little creek that leads into that lake. And here's the town of uh, Wainsodia, uh, Wainsoduna, or however you're looking to see it's spelled differently. I'm just going to pick this southern edge because it looks like a good spot, right? So we're going to click here. And we're going to click here. And that's the second spot. And we're going to pick the final third spot. And then we'll be almost done. Zoom back out. Now we need to come all the way down to the southern end of the area here, which is what we're going to try to, to see if we can find a spot down here in the islands. So we're off the very end tip of Papua New Guinea. And this is going to be the general vicinity of the area that we're in right now. And I don't really need to go all the way out here because it's just going to be nothing out there for me to find. Um, but what I will do is try to see if we can get to this area down here, which is the island. I see. Okay, there's the island. And so we can maybe use the tip of the island here somewhere to, to, to use our final reference point. It's a ton of them out here, so this might be a little tricky. You might want to be careful in where you pick here. This looks like this island right here. Yeah, that's definitely going to be that island here. So we're just going to use that as a reference point. We're going to come down to that southern point here, uh, which is showing that there might be a lighthouse or something there. We're going to use this southern point. So here's our third and final point there. Third and final point here. That's three points. Now, you've got now three reference points. The next thing you can do, and the, the video that is a tip tutorial will show you this, is then you can come and lock these two together. And now that you've locked them, when you zoom in on one, the other one will zoom out, so they kind of follow each other around, which is great. Then you can also come up here now to the top, and instead of doing this side by side, you can do this overlay. And that will actually put the two overlaid on top, as the, the name it means. And then you can turn the transparency up and down and very quickly see between the two. You can also do a shift, and that will transition between the two. But you can very quickly get a feel for how well is this going to overlay. And again, these things aren't going to be perfect, especially when you're using a very old map source like this. Um, but you can do this now and then go to take a look at all your points that you've laid out and just make sure that there's no like gross errors. That's really what you're looking for. And you can see how the, the, the chart itself has already been overlaid um, with the actual map in the background. And you know, you'll get a feel for how well is this represented? Is it you know, grossly off? 
Um, you can see that's pretty doggone close, right? Fairly close, but the coastline's a little different here, as you can see, right? So this may be, again, I'm doing a quick and dirty. The other way you can tell how accurate your um, overlay job is, is go to coordinates, and you want to look for no errors. See, we're at very, pretty much no errors here. So that will tell you that just on a high level, that's probably going to import fairly well. Right, so you are done at this point. You've you've made your three points. There they are. If you need to edit and change them, you can. But basically, you're ready to move to the next step, and you just hit continue. It's going to give you a preview where you can view the footprint of how that map overlays the area to say, "Yep, got pretty much what I want to capture. That's looking good." So you can go back and forth between the two. I would leave all the standards here. Let it pick what it's going to. It'll work for you at the end. Uh, you can, you know, if you really know what you're doing, you want to change your coordinates, of course you can, but just let it do its thing and then hit export. When you get to this screen, the video will go over this as well too. You want to use MB tiles. That is what the format for flight uses to import the files. Hit continue. It'll give you some details here. Again, leave the defaults, hit render and it's going to create a file for you, which I will place into a folder. And the folder that I'm going to put it into is going to be my ForeFlight folder, which I guess at the moment, you know what I'm going to do. I will, um, let's see, get to that folder where that is. So we go to apps, we go to ForeFlight, we go to map tiles, and we'll stick it in there. Now it's doing the actual rendering now, which for most of these files would be pretty quick. Obviously, if you're doing something much larger, it might take a little bit longer. Um, but the uh, MapTalic company gives you an opportunity to preview some of their other product offerings if you want to upgrade. The free version works just fine. Again, you can preview it, um, but you're, you're done. So you click continue, render says it's complete. Um, I put it into a folder, which is now in my ForeFlight. And so now I'm gonna show you how to get it into ForeFlight. Okay, so we got everything that we need here. We can quit out of the program. This is uh, my uh, iPad. So here we have the iPad, and here we have the file that I just dragged into that folder in Dropbox. And the easiest way to get stuff into ForeFlight is to just do it from a shared folder. You've got a Dropbox, or you've got a linked Dropbox, or a OneDrive, or something like that. That's the quickest and easiest way to get it in there. Um, so with that said, I can then basically take the file that I've uploaded into ForeFlight, uh, into, I'm sorry, into Dropbox. And from here, I can click on the little three dots. And then what I want to do is hit share. And then you want to export the file. And for that, I'm going to export ForeFlight. It's right in there. So it goes through the export process. It opens up ForeFlight automatically. And you can see I have custom content here and it shows the name of the file up top. I click custom content. I click custom charts. It tells me import success. And now to see that, I click on my user points here. So I click on the, uh, the overlays. And now you can see we have Morose Map imported and available as an overlay within ForeFlight. Super cool. Um, and again, it's going to be pretty doggone close. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect, but as you zoom in, there's the airport showing here, you know, AYPY. It's pretty much right on top of it. So it's very good just for rough navigation, especially for these bush flights that you're doing in this area. If you're having fun with your uh, Kodiak or any other bush aircraft and you're flying in Papua New Guinea or some of these other remote places where you might not have good navigation charts, this is a great way to get them into fore flight and then you can use it and ha help you uh, assisting in your VFR uh, flight planning in the area. Really straightforward to use and you can see that I can turn on the rest of them that I've actually imported. And if you take a look back and I zoom back out, you can see I've imported the rest of these. So I've got a good portion of Papua New Guinea covered with the charts that I've imported through the process that I should share with you. So hopefully that helps you get uh, a handle on putting in overlays and making use of the wonderful powerful features we have within ForeFlight. Uh, if this was helpful, go ahead and, uh, and drop comments in there if you have any questions. If not, happy uh, overlaying and talk to you soon.